Hey, Trey Veston here with another edition of my father's firearms, and I'm here with my sidekick, Arlo. Say hi, Arlo. Okay, he's happy. Alrighty. So today, we're featuring a 1968 Browning Superpose 12 gauge over under shotgun. This was purchased by my father, used in 1974. Uh, he sold it to a friend of his a few years later. I believe it was in the early 80s. Uh, his friend then had it engraved, had some, some cool engraving to it, and that upset my father, so he bought it back. And when he passed away a year ago, I inherited it. So why did the engraving upset my father? And why is this gun so special to me? Well, it's because it was originally purchased brand new in 1968 by Jack O'Connor, the writer from Outdoor Life. Yeah, yeah, this he bought this brand new. Um, now, all this is secondhand. My father told me this a couple years ago. He was showing me this, this firearm for the first time, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever because I'm old enough to remember Jack O'Connor and his articles in Outdoor Life and you know, how much he was just a revered writer and outdoorsman. It's just really cool. So, from what I remember from what my father told me, is that this was sold to Mr. O'Connor in 1968, uh, 30 miles from where my, my father grew up and where I grew up in Moscow, Idaho. It was sold in Lewiston, Idaho at Lolo Sporting Goods. And... Mr. O'Connor hunted with it uh, for a few years. He decided he wanted something different or he didn't need it or he, he wasn't, he couldn't bird hunt anymore. I don't know, it was 1974. It was pretty much towards the end of his, his life. And so he took it back to Lolo Sporting Goods, put it on consignment for $500, which is like 150 bucks more than what he paid for it new. They knew my father <clears throat> was a huge Jack O'Connor fan. He wasn't really a, a friend of Jack O'Connor's, but he was an associate, and he was working with Mr. O'Connor to try and put together a, a hunt in Alaska. And my, my father at the time wrote for the Lewiston Morning Tribune. He had the outdoor, and a column in the outdoor section, weekly column. And so he, and also he was a pilot at the time and owned some bush planes, some Cessnas, and he was going to fly Mr. O'Connor up to either Alaska or Canada. I think it was Alaska. And they were going to go on this hunt together in exchange for my, my father flying him up there and, and taking care of expenses. Mr. O'Connor is going to allow him to write an article for the Tribune on the trip. But yeah, sadly, Mr. O'Connor passed before that came to fruition. So my father was a fan of Mr. O'Connor's, looked up to him. And so when this came up for sale, he bought it. And I don't know what he did with it. He didn't fill me in on that. I assume he hunted with it. Um, it doesn't look like it's been hunted. There's a couple of little, tiny little imperfections here and there. Um, but it doesn't look like it's ever been heavily used in the field. Uh, it's pretty much almost... A just pristine condition. So uh, my father had it for a few years. I believe it was sometime in the 80s. He sold it to a lawyer friend of his and the lawyer thought it was really cool to take this awesome Jack O'Connor shotgun and add, have engraving added that paid tribute to Mr. O'Connor and his two favorite places to, to bird hunt. And this side features a longhorn skull, cattle skull, and some prickly pear cactus, and some chuckers feeding, and that looks like one is resting on the skull. Uh, I don't know if that'll show up when we're doing the close-up of the gun. Uh, that was the tribute to, to the Arizona hunting areas, and then on this side, it's a tribute to the Idaho chucker hunting areas. It's, there's a chucker in flight, and there's a steep canyon. I think that's supposed to represent uh, Hell's Canyon area south of Lewiston where Mr. O'Connor resided. So, but my father, knowing that molesting this 
this firearm with engraving substantially reduced the value, upset him. So he he bought it back. That's what he told me. He bought it back and he put it in the safe and so no more harm would come to this iconic historical firearm. Uh, so when he passed, I inherited it and I just wanted to learn more about the history of it. So I contacted Browning and said, hey, this is what my dad told me. Here's the serial number. Here's some photos. What can you tell me about it? They sent me a letter of authentication. Authentic? Yeah, authentication. And basically confirmed that it was purchased brand new by Mr. O'Connor of Lolo Sporting Goods in Lewiston, Idaho in 1968. It was May for it was 300 and something dollars. And so, yeah, so it was verified. But what isn't verified, and that I'm hoping in this video tell me what's going on um, what what part of the engraving is original what was added after after by the lawyer is this stock original browning I don't know it's so gorgeous the forend is so gorgeous um, I would like to think that it's original um, except for the engraving but I don't know for sure I don't know so yeah if you could comment below and just tell me if you know anything about the Browning superposed and if what level of engraving they had, what style of engraving, if you think this, the, you know, the higher quality engraving is original, that would be cool. Um, value of this firearm, it's tough to pin down. I contacted a Jack O'Connor historian over in Montana, very gracious to, to, to help me out. He said, if it was all original, Factory new with the letter of provid Providence, 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 or Providence, I don't know. Anyway, it's a real deal. He said with that, it could be at auction, it could bring, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, maybe fifty grand at the, at the high end. Um, but with the non-original engraving uh, done by the lawyer, blood-sucking lawyers, I'll tell you, um, he said... Currently in this condition, with the history and the, the letter of authenticity, it's probably at auction maybe thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars, which was kind of of a relief to me because my plans for the shotgun is it's going to stay in the family. A Jack O'Connor owned firearm, the only one that I know of um, that we have. It's going to stay in the family. It's going to be passed down to generations. Um, at fifty thousand, that would have been hard to to keep. It's like that's a lot of money. It's tempting to sell that. I mean, my house. I think I owe a hundred grand on my house. So fifty grand knocking your mortgage by half. That's it's tempting, but no. At twelve thousand, it's it's still a lot of money for a shotgun. It's a, it's a lot of money for any firearm. But at that price point, I'm not that afraid of, of using it. I did take a trap shooting earlier today. Now, no, I am not going to use this as a trap gun. I, I want to take it out in the field at least once. And to shoot a bird in the field with this would be, it's, it's a bucket list thing. Um, but today I did take it to the, uh, to the, the gun club. And I shot it. It's only the third time I've shot trap in my life. And I'm, I'm horrible at it. So I only got, I think, 14 out of 25 <laughs> clays with this. And I'll, there should be some, as I'm speaking, there should be some video clips rolling of, of me actually hitting clays. And yeah, there's not a lot of clips of me actually hitting stuff. So there you go. But anyway, yeah, so I'm going to keep this in the family. Uh, maybe take it in the field one day, and that's it. Uh, it's going to be valued and appreciated, and and uh, yeah, I just wanted to share it with the viewers. It's it's really cool firearm. I, sh I let a couple of people know at the gun club that it was a Jack O'Connor shotgun, and they thought that was really cool, and they checked it out, and yeah, so anyway... Trey Veston here. If you have any more information on this, the uh, origina originality of the engraving, 
or the stock or any of that, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more cool firearms, subscribe. We're going to do a, a Jack O'Connor tribute rifle that my dad had built by Al Beeson. And it's a 270 Winchester, Model 70, pre-64, of course. And it's, it's a gorgeous gun. It was used by my father to take two North American Grand Slams. So it's going to be a cool, cool gun to review. I can't wait to shoot it. Uh, not so much just the accuracy, but just it's just an iconic firearm. So subscribe if you want to see some more cool stuff like that. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this this edition. And Arlo, do you want to say anything? No, you're done. Okay, the Belgian Malinois known as Arlo abides. Alrighty, Trey Vesten out.